And you find when people actually meet her, you know, they may not agree with her politically, but the latest one to say so was Louis C.K., who said some horrible things about the governor in the past and about her son. And, you know, we won't go over that on the program, but she got to meet him at the SNL Awards and he offered her an apology, something he said he never did before and doesn't plan on doing uh, after to anyone else. Uh, (laughs) But he said he just felt bad because she was so nice to him. And, you know, I've heard this Mm -hmm. from others, too, not only in Hollywood, but, uh, you know, Mark Lamont Hill comes to mind and and some others who, you know, were probably anti-Palin when you talk politically, but when they meet her, they have a hard time with the personal visceral attacks. So I think that we've seen that a lot of people who go after her have never never met her in their life. Yeah, I've never met her before personally, but I mean, she seems like a, a very charismatic uh, person. So yeah, it would probably be hard to, to be mean to someone who's who's being nice to you. <laughs> right now, an, and you've got to love you've got to love Tina Fey and uh, Sarah Palin on SNL whenever they get on there together. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean that's another thing. I mean, after all of that went down, there was Sarah Palin with Tina Fey with Alec Baldwin, and Governor Palin was not afraid to go on there with them. You know, a lot of people would just say, "Oh, well, that person talked poorly about me." Uh, you know, no way, I'm I'm not going near them. And and the Louis. CK, I mean, is really uh, the one that drives it home because after all the things uh, he said, all she had were kind words telling him that her nephew thinks he's hysterical. So, you know, it's just <laughs> taking the high road, you know. Now, you haven't met Palin, but a star you did meet and has a connection to the Palins is the late Joan Rivers. And uh, Bristol and Joan's daughter swapped families for a day or a few days on a television show. And uh, Rivers was one not to mince words. Of course, her passing that shocked everybody. I know that uh, you won one of them. Uh, You you got to meet Joan? Yeah, I actually uh, worked with Joan uh, several times over the years, and she was always just so uh, full of life and so easy to work with. Uh, I remember one shoot we were doing together where uh, we were taking a lunch break, and everyone had, like, the crew was just sitting on the floor in uh in this area eating you know just sitting on the floor and eating and joan came and sat down and just sat down on the floor and started eating with everybody else and you know you're kind of going wait wait joan you have to you have to you're, you know you're a big star you got to be in a chair or something you know like so you need like your your entourage and all that stuff and she she didn't she was so down to earth and so relaxed and such a just really really amazing woman See, I think that's exactly what we were talking about with the whole Palin uh, situation. You know, just because you have a profile doesn't mean you can't be a person. And uh, Joan Rivers, you hear this from so many people that knew her, uh, that that was the way she was around everybody. And you may not have liked some of the things she said, but you know what? She, she'd she back them up and she'd say them again. And, and at least you knew what you were getting. You know, in this day and age when people try to hem and haw and say one thing to one side and one to another or get along with everybody. Oh, yes. Yeah. Very straightforward. <laughs> That's, it. That's it. And, you know, it's just really, uh, really, really lost a comedic uh, legend there with uh, Joan Rivers. And, and the, you talk about can, you know, Sarah Palin, the first uh, uh, Republican woman ever to be on a national ticket. Well, Joan Rivers, she broke a lot of glass ceilings herself in the entertainment world. And, you know, people may not give her those props all the time uh, or re- maybe not even realize. But when you talk about the Carlins and the Priors and, and other, uh, other comics and things that she did and from a hosting standpoint i mean she was a trailblazer she was absolutely a trailblazer for women in comedy and show business and hosting and uh it actually when i worked when i worked with her before i i told her the exact things i'm like you are an icon you are someone for myself and for every other woman in entertainment to look up to and to you know strive to to be like i don't know if i'll say all the things that she did but <laughs> i don't think i could get away with them <laughs> but that moment you know she just she was an amazing performer now, someone else who doesn't mince words is uh, Donald Trump, and you were involved in the pageant world. You were a Miss Arizona and uh, a few years back, and that was, uh, I guess, during your time or shortly uh, before your time with the Cardinals. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. Sa- Sarah Palin also in the pageant world, and we've, uh, for whatever reason, it seems like a lot of uh, pageant guests have been on this show. We've had a couple of Miss Americas here with Angela Baracchio and, and also with uh, Erica Harold and a couple of Miss USAs here as well, or Miss USA contestants, at least, with uh, Tara Connor and, and some others. What was that pageant experience uh, like for you? Because
because there's a stereotype out there, yet every time I talk to someone who's been in a pageant, I mean, you're talking to usually very intellectual people. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, some of the the most intelligent, well-spoken, successful, uh, kind, together people I've ever met have been in the pageant world, and I'm still friends with many of them today, so... Uh, it's funny, you know, sometimes people have this idea or this opinion that, you know, maybe they're not the smartest or maybe it's just all about swimsuits and pretty dresses, but there's so much more to it if you really get into the world of pageants and who's, you know, winning Miss USA or who's winning Miss Arizona or Miss California or whatever. What do you think would happen if Donald Trump ran for president? I mean, there's been some talk about that, exploratory committees and, and things of that nature. And, you know, there may be other candidates that people may agree with, say, maybe more lock, stock and barrel on the issues. But I'll tell you one thing. If Donald Trump ran for president, we just talked about Joan Rivers and Sarah Palin. I bet you he wouldn't mince his words. I mean, I think you'd know where he stood and I think he would call people out who aren't getting the job done. I mean, he's done it all his life in corporate America. Yeah, he's definitely another one of those who you you don't wonder where he stands. (laughs) He'll let you know. (laughs) Right, right. So something to keep our eye on in case we see that. It could be interesting. I think that's been the problem for a lot of the people who've uh, tried to run for high office in recent years. You know, you see a lot of people after they run, and you say, whoa, where was that before? You know, Mitt Romney just did this um, charity boxing event with Evander Holyfield, and you heard Mitt Romney after. He was engaging and funny, and he said, Oh, okay, where was that for most of the campaign? I think a lot of them think they have to be an actor when they run instead mm-hmm. of being themselves. And I think those who support Governor Palin, that's one of the reasons they like her. She talks the same way to her family or to her friends as the way she does to the public. Right, yeah. And, and Donald's probably the same way whenever I've you know, had interactions with Donald Trump. He's always been... You know, just he's very straightforward and he, you know, he tells you exactly what he's thinking and what's going on. But I've always had such a great time working with him and being around him and his family and at Miss USA and in other situations. He's just a really, really great guy. Well, Danielle, we're really excited for you. And I mean, we could go on and on and on. We didn't even touch on everything that you've done you do so much and uh fit to hit is the new program it's coming on the tennis channel in july we're certainly going to keep an eye on that and uh tell everybody uh where people can follow you on twitter and social media uh all right uh twitter you can find me at danielle Demsky, and it's d-e-m-s-k-i uh and then on let's see instagram you can find me also at danielle Demsky. Um, and then Facebook, you can find me at Danielle underscore Dembski. So, all right, yeah. and, well, lots of different ways to connect. I guess <laughs> it's the world of social media. And hey, I got to give you a huge thumbs up. You're a Cardinals fan. I'm a Bears fan, but together. We are both very excited that Tim Tebow is finally getting another chance in the NFL, even though he's certainly not on the team (laughs) either of us wanted him to be on, because I know both of us could have used him and probably still could. (laughs) And, you know, the Eagles would have been right toward the bottom of a team I would have picked for where where I would want him to go. But you know what? Go, Timmy, go. And I saw your tweet on it, and and I agree with you a thousand percent. I hope he does well, and I think he really will as long as he gets a chance and doesn't get, uh, you know, these. Uh, false pretenses like the Jets. Yeah, I love it when players get another chance to go back to the NFL. So, especially for someone like him, I I hope it turns out well. <laughs> Even good. though he's not on my team. <laughs> right, right. So we'll see what happens. But you know what? He probably should have been on either of our teams because we could use him. Danielle <laughs> Dembski, looking forward to the new show and all that you do. One of the busiest women in America, and she loves every minute of it, apparently. <laughs> well, great to talk to you. Thanks for having me. For more on our friend Danielle Dembski, visit danielle-dembski.com. That's danielle-dembski.com.